probably it might come to you as surprise that approximately 50% uh, CPU sold are actually 8-bit microcontrollers and 8051 is uh, one of them. With so many such controllers all around us, it makes sense to learn more about them. So why do we choose 8051 and not anyone else? Well, uh, one strong reason is that it's simple architecture and the completeness uh, makes it suitable for teaching basic embedded system design concepts. That is why uh, you'll see that 8051 is a part of uh, curriculum at many universities. Further, 8051 microcontrollers have a low unit cost. And these are used in a number of applications such as uh, displays, touch screens, automotive control, toys, etc. Being one of the early 8-bit microcontrollers, years of usage has also resulted in uh, significant know-how. This also opens the possibility of reusing legacy code, which means that the same old code can be used on newer implementations of the same vendor or another vendor. So with this background, let us start taking closer look at uh, 8051 architecture. Let us see what is there inside 8051. Like any other processor, it has arithmetic logic unit and CPU. It has four kilobytes of uh, read-only memory. This is where uh, program and constant data such as lookup tables are put. Apart from ROM, there is 128 bytes of RAM. Few implementations have uh, more RAM. To communicate with the external world, there are four 8-bit input-output ports. 8051 also have ports for serial communication. Though we have uh, shown it separately for clarity, serial ports are actually part of port 3. There are also uh, two 16-bit timers. These can either be used as a timer or event counters. We will learn all these uh, in later lessons. Another salient feature of 8051 is that it has many instructions for bit level manipulations. If you don't have bit level instructions, you may have to rely on uh, higher order logical instructions, which may result in more program memory space and lower performance due to more instructions getting executed. Some 8051 implementations also have uh, power down mode. In this case, uh, when microcontroller is idle, it can be put in the power down mode, reducing power consumption. Some variants also have uh, USB and CAN interface. CAN actually stands for uh, Controller Area Network Protocol. This protocol is uh, de facto standard for communication inside vehicles. So all the microcontrollers which are going inside a car or any other vehicle must have support for CAN interface. With this feature overview, let's take a look at more detailed diagram of 8051. What we see here is a more detailed block diagram. We are not showing the exact pin diagram as the same can be seen in references. We have followed uh, certain color coding to show different kind of components. Yellow colored boxes are uh, ports. Pink colored boxes are memories. And blue colored ones are registers and green colored ones are uh, where either control or arithmetic happens. Let us start with ports. Each port uh, consists of two parts. The first one is latch and second one is driver. While driver is responsible for uh, sending and receiving data from actual pins, data has to be stored in the latch first before it can be sent out. Address registered are uh, required to pass an exact address to the ROM or RAM. Arithmetic logic unit or LU uh, makes use of a couple of special registers, namely ACC or A, which stands for uh, accumulator, and register B. LU also reads and writes PSW or program status word register. SP register stands for uh, stack pointer which is used in case of uh, subroutine calls. PC stands for uh, program counter. That is where uh, you keep the address of the memory. 
and DPTR stands for uh, data pointer register. These registers are used to access memories. Apart from these, there are other control units for handling uh, interrupts, timers, serial communication and clock. We will look at all of them in the coming lessons. Let us get started with uh, learning more about different components of 8051. Central processing unit or CPU as it is known in short is the core of uh, microprocessor. CPU typically consists of uh, instruction decoder, data path and other control functionality. Instruction decoder is responsible for uh, slicing the instruction and finding out what operation is to be done. This information is either conveyed to data path or other control units. 8051 is a 8-bit microcontroller. This is because uh, its data path is 8-bit wide. Accumulator and other uh, most of the registers are actually 8-bit wide. Data path or ALU gets to know what to be done through instruction decoder. ALU then uh, gets its operands through accumulator register bank and other special data path registers. Accumulator is also denoted as A or ACC. It is implicit in many arithmetic instructions such as add, subtract, etc. We will learn these instructions in detail later on. For multiply and divide instructions, ALU also reads uh, another special data path register called uh, B. ALU also reads and updates program status word. PSW consists of uh, carry, parity, register, bank select flags and so on. We will uh, get to know more about PSW later on. So far as control is concerned, it is performed through a number of special function registers. Exactly what is to be done is of course found out uh, after instruction decoding has been done. Let us now get an overview of uh, memories next. In 8051, there is separate memory space for uh, program and data. The address bus is 16-bit uh, wide. That means up to 64 kilobytes uh, of memory can be addressed or accessed. Typical 8051 implementation such as uh, 80, 89S51 has 4 kilobyte of on-chip program memory or ROM and 128 bytes of uh, uh, chip data memory or RAM. We also see RAM address map here. As we note here, there are four register banks. Register bank selection happens through uh, two bits in program status word register. We will see later the exact configuration of uh, PSW. In the diagram, addresses are represented as uh, hexadecimal numbers. Here H stands for hexadecimal. The first digit represents uh, higher four bits and the second digit represents the lower four bits. Apart from register banks, there are also uh, several bit addresses from uh, 20H to 2FH. These locations are reserved for uh, bit operations. Upper locations from uh, 30H to uh, 7FH is available as scratch pad. Basically, this means that these locations can be used for uh, temporary storage. Locations uh, ATH to FFH are reserved for uh, special function registers or also termed as uh, SFRs. Examples of these registers are accumulator, PSW, ports, timers, etc. So all these registers are actually mapped here. As we will learn in coming lessons that registers can be referred in the assembly instruction as its name. At the same time, as registers are part of the memory space, they can also be directly addressed by providing appropriate address. As we saw earlier, there are four 8-bit ports in 8051. These are named as uh, P0, P1, P2 and P3. These ports serve a dual purpose to save the number of pins. They can be used as uh, regular ports, means you can do uh, input and output in the regular manner. At the same time, they can also be used for uh, some special functions. For example, P0 and P2 help to access uh, external memory. That is also the reason why uh, P0 and P2 
are shown uh, side by side in the block diagrams. P0 is also used for uh, lower byte of the address and this is time multiplex with the data. P2 is also used for uh, higher byte of the address if the address is uh, 16 bit wide. We will get to know uh, these functionalities in more detail when we uh, study the external memory access. Uh, similarly, P1 and P3 are also used for uh, external input, external uh, timer input and serial communication. We will see details of uh, these functionalities when we cover corresponding topics later on. For now, let us just be aware that it is normal practice to map uh, multiple functionalities on the same pins to reduce the number of pins on the chip. Timers and interrupts are uh, very critical components of 8051 to make it suitable to be used in a variety of embedded systems. Alarms, event counting, etc. are some applications where timers are used. Further, interrupts make sure that the microcontroller is used in a more efficient manner and more devices can be served easily. Though we will go over details later on, let us get an overview right now. So when we talk about timers, there are two kinds of timers. So the first is uh, watchdog timer. Uh, this timer is actually intended as recovery method from uh, software upsets. So in this case, uh, what happens if uh, something goes wrong with the processor? In that case, uh, watchdog timer will be active and it will cause the microcontroller to be reset. So that is how uh, it is serving as a reco recovery mechanism. So there are two other timers, timer 0 and timer 1 and they can be configured as a timer or external event counter. So within 8051 there are two special registers uh, Tmod and Tcon and using these registers uh, the functionality of uh, timer 0 and timer 1 are controlled. These timers can be configured as uh, 8, 13 or 16 bit uh, timers or event counters. So when the count is uh, over, when uh, finally it reaches the limit, so in that case the count rollover happens and uh, the rollover can be watched either by polling, that means uh, you keep checking the value of the timer or uh, it can be done through timer interrupts and the timer interrupts can be configured through uh, Tmod and Tcon registers. Let us see the polling again. So in case of polling what happens that uh, suppose you have to watch for a particular port or some other register you can keep doing so in a loop and if you do that in a loop then it will keep the microcontroller busy and microcontroller will not be able to do anything else. On the other hand the same functionality can be achieved through interrupt. So in that case what will happen is that microcontroller will keep on doing uh, something else some other stuff and uh, when the interrupt comes then uh, it will save the context and then it will move on to serve that interrupt. So within 8051 there are uh, two timer interrupts and there are two uh, external general purpose interrupt. There is one serial communication interrupt also. So all these interrupts can be controlled through a special register called uh, interrupt enable register. And you can also mask some of the interrupts. That means uh, if you set the bit values appropriately in uh, interrupt enable register you can enable or disable certain interrupts. Uh, the convention is that within 8051 initial positions of uh, read only memory they are used for uh, interrupt vector table. Uh, we'll learn more about uh, interrupt vector table when we uh, go through interrupts again. Uh, 